Hi guys. Well, it is a little bit of a hot and sticky summer day here in the collapse of global industrial civilization, although we can't complain, I guess, up here in the Finger Lakes of New York, baby, at Bugs in a Jar Farm, uh, compared to the rest of the world, I guess. But anyway, it is Friday. It is Friday, July 22nd, uh, 2022, so... Being Friday, I do what I try to do every Friday, and that is to, we're going to go over there and check in with mongabay.com. Rhett Butler and the boys and girls at mongabay.com to, uh, for their, well, we're going to try to dodge the hopium landmines and uh, check in with the, what do I call it, the weekly cavalcade of catastrophe unfolding on this collapsing planet which you certainly will never hear about uh, anywhere on the mainstream media and first I have to figure out how to get rid of this begin your investing career bullshit okay that's gone all right, uh, we're going to start over there in Sri Lanka. Okay, the kickoff headline, Sri Lankan environmental policy failures helped fuel people-powered revolution. Okay, there's, there's two problems with that headline. The, the lead-off headline is number one, the environmental policy failures had virtually nothing to do, okay, with the people-powered revolution in Sri Lanka or anywhere else on the planet. Nothing. Uh, so that's the first problem. But a bigger problem is that uh, whoever comes in you know, the new boss to replace the old boss is, there's a virtually, a virtual 100% chance they're going to be just as bad. And there's a, at least a 50-50 chance that the new boss is going to have a, a worse environmental policy than the old boss. And anyway, let's see how Manga Bay is playing this uh, confusing story. Mismanagement of environmental concerns contributed to the unpopularity and eventual resignation in the face of popular protest of uh, this dude whose name I cannot pronounce, now the former president of Sri Lanka. Uh, while his main legacy is the worst economic crisis in the country's history, he also leaves behind a multitude of failed environmental policies. Yes. <coughs> okay. Uncontrolled exploitation of natural resources. Creating opportunities for land grabbing through amendments to the law and dismissing environmental concerns have all impacted the country. Yes. And so now, where are we looking at? With Sri Lanka's economic hardship deepening and driving the population of 22 million into survival mode, environmental activists are warning of even more intensive exploitation of natural resources, which is exactly what you're getting ready to see in Sri Lanka. They are going, the, the people-powered revolution, whoever they're kidding themselves, thinking they're going to put back in power, uh, how do you think uh, whoever it is 
it, it, it is going to try to turn the economic situation around by more intensive exploitation of the natural resources of Sri Lanka. This is a story you can repeat on every country on the planet, including the good old United States of America. Does anybody have any confusion? There is no difference whether it's Sri Lanka or the U.S. Okay. Anyway, moving on. Um, Uh-oh, we have the word noble. I I anyway, guys, there there's a lot to get in here, so we're going to... Right. Yes, scientists call for end to violence against Amazon communities and environmental defenders. Yes. Uh. An alignment, an alignment between illegal resource extraction and drug trafficking in the Amazon places people protecting resources at increasing risks, do you think? So Latin America is the most dangerous region in the world for environmental defenders in Colombia and Brazil are at the top of the list for killings. And there you go. Uh, okay, I love it when they, when they ask a question. In a world convulsed by climate-driven conflict, are peace parks an answer? Are peace parks an answer to a world convulsed by climate-driven conflict? I think we all know the answer is no. Peace parks are not an answer, unless the answer is no. Uh, to a world convulsed by climate-driven conflict. All right. Conflicts over disputed borders increasingly exacerbated by climate change are putting some of the world's key biodiversity hotspots at risk. Even in countries that have avoided border wars, a global campaign of fence-building aimed at keeping out human migrants whose numbers are rising in an era of climate change and sociopolitical socio unrest is causing widespread damage to vulnerable natural landscapes and migratory animal species. Yes, in potential conflict zones, like the Himalayas, Eastern Europe, the Caucasus, and the South China Sea. Fence building in the South China Sea, I would like to see that. Uh, this surging human march across national frontiers has already led to violence and in some cases to open warfare. Yes, border straddling conservation zones known as peace parks offer a more sustainable way of managing border disputes than militarization and fence building? Yes. Okay, we are going to build some peace parks. Alright, uh, we already talked about that one. Okay, here we have uh, an interview, Manga Bay, interviewing deep sea mining opponent Debbie Guerra Packer. Yeah, she is a an activist, a Maori activist from New Zealand has spent more than two decades using her position to advance social justice issues to campaign for the protection of the marine environment. Good for you, girl. 
A key issue she is currently working on is a push to ban deep sea mining in the global ocean. A proposed activity that would extract large amounts of minerals from the seabed. Good luck uh, on that, darling. I'm sure uh, you will be successful on banning s deep sea mining in the global ocean. All right. Uh, here is uh, an, the latest protected area being, uh, you know, just uh, being obliterated off the planet. This is the region of Los Tuxlas in the Mexican state of Veracruz is a UNESCO biosphere reserve, a volcanic mountain range clad in rainforest and home to more than 800 vertebrate species and several different primary forest ecosystems. Yes, you will not believe this, but in the past several decades, deforestation and contamination have spiked in Los Tuxlas, and several species once found in the area have gone extinct. Environmental organizations warn that at the current rate of deforestation, complete loss of the region's native biodiversity is inevitable. And you can say this for any tropical forest ecosystem on the planet. From this UNESCO World Heritage Site protected area right on through, one more time, this is for the entire planet. If you do not understand this at the current rate of deforestation and we're not even talking about the future rate of deforestation which is even going to be worse than the current one so not even talking about that just putting that one aside uh, at the current rate of deforestation complete loss of the region's native biodiversity is inevitable. Do you get it? There will be no such thing as a surviving rainforest ecosystem on planet Earth this century. That simple. This is not a prediction. It is a statement of fact with anybody with a brain looking at the handwriting on the wall. Anyway, uh, let's see, here is uh, some, uh, what is this, some lake, the Tony Sap Lake in Cambodia. You can uh, kiss goodbye. Uh, anyway, let's see. All right, you will be shocked to hear this. You know, we've been, uh, I've mentioned this story a couple of times over the last year or two, how Indonesia Indonesia banned the use of this destructive fishing net called a uh, seine net. Uh, and so what is the update on this story? Ban on use of destructive net fails to make an impact in Indonesia. Hmm. Fisheries observers say a year-old ban on seine, on seine nets considered unsustainable and destructive has been largely ineffective. Yes, reports show that fishermen continue to use these square-meshed 
Cantrang net despite the ban. Yes. While in theory, the replacement net should allow juvenile fish to escape, in practice, it is used much the same way as the old net, threatening already depleted fish stocks around the country. Yes. Okay. Well, at least this dude in, in uh, Vietnam. Ah, Sancho! No. You're not going off. We're doing a rant. Earn your keep around here. Earn your dog food. Actually, uh, I have started feeding Sancho Walmart factory farm chicken because it is easier to cook Sancho Walmart. I mean, it's cheaper. A lot cheaper. Walmart chicken is a lot cheaper than dog food. But anyway, uh, where were we before uh, Sancho thought he was going to go uh, impact a chipmunk? Uh, so this is Vietnam's best known environmental activist. This would be Guy Thi Con was just sentenced to two years in jail for tax evasion. Yes. Anyway, what a surprise. Uh, let's see. Okay, hopium, hopium. All right. What do you think is going on with elephants in Nepal? If your answer was an unprecedented crisis for Nepal's elephants, give yourself a gold star. Conflict with humans is considered the biggest threat to Asian elephants in Nepal, says veteran conservationist Ashok Ram Encounters between villagers and elephants typically occur when they stray into each other's areas in search of food. Yes, stray into each other's areas. In an interview, oh, we have, so they're interviewing this guy. He explains the history of habitat fragmentation, why a electric fences are not a solution to human elephant conflict, and why mid afternoon is the most dangerous time to encounter an elephant. I don't know which uh, time of day. I don't know what, that, that's the most dangerous time of day to encounter an elephant. It does not say what time of day is the most dangerous for an elephant to encounter a human. All right, we have an absolute shocking headline, guys. Uh, you know, I had to, I had to read this several times, I, I just, you know, I was trying to make the connection and figure out what Rhett was talking about here. See if uh, you're as confused as I was about this headline. Uh, okay. Red hot demand for iPay wood coincides with deforestation in Brazil. Hmm. We have red hot demand for a Brazilian Amazon hardwood tree coinciding with deforestation in the Brazilian Amazon. That really is a coincidence, isn't it? You know, I mean, I, I had no explanation for this coincidence. Logging to meet demand for the tropical hardwood Ipe coincides with hot spots of illegal deforestation in the Brazilian Amazon. 
the source of 96% of iPay use worldwide. So far, just this year, the total area of deforestation alerts in the top 20 ePay harvesting municipalities cover an area and eight the size of Rio de Janeiro. Yes. The logging industry says concessions authorized by the government deliver only 2% of the native wood that reaches the market, meaning 98% of ePay wood going to global markets is, quote, illegal. You know, I'm not going to get back into my illegal versus legal logging. Tell that to an ePay tree and all of the animals dependent on that ePay tree is you have no right to complain because that tree was legally harvested by humans. Yes. Experts recommend sweeping measures to address the destruction of the Amazon and blah, blah, blah. So, uh, what happened, computer? I have one of these damn touch screen computers and I just touched the screen and, okay. After we got through that shocking headline, uh, what else we got here? Turtle DNA database, a turtle DNA database traces illegal shell trade to poaching hotspots. Critically endangered hawksbill turtles have been hunted for their pattern shells for centuries to make tortoise shell jewelry and decorative curios. Yes, the exploitation and trade pushed the species to the brink of de extinction despite international bans on killing and trading the turtles in their parts. Hmm, persistent demand continues to stoke the illegal trade. Experts say they huh. Experts say they huh. Experts say they hope the launch of a new global turtle DNA database huh, can turn the tables on poachers and illegal traders. Yes. D, 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 D. Uh. Okay, guys, here, you know, every week, uh, it seems that red is somewhere on the planet, you know, looking at this never ending debate. Should national parks and other protected areas, mainly national parks all over the planet, should they be a human exclusion zone? You know, with the maybe the possible exception of tourists, but you know, should quote, indigenous people be allowed to live inside of protected national parks. And uh, I will read this for anybody who does not understand the, uh, the difference in the concepts between planet nibbling and planet eating. We're going to teach you the difference and you decide for yourself, do you think humans should be allowed to live inside this national park? Authorities and Yobin communities clash as deforesta deforestation spikes inside India National Park. Nam Defa National Park is India's third largest national park and is home 
to thousands of species, including tigers, clouded leopards, blah, blah, blah. Satellite data show deforestation has increased inside the park over the last two decades. Members of an indigenous group called the Yobin have been living in portions of the park for generations. But park authorities consider Yobin settlements to be encroachments and the main driver of both deforestation and poaching inside Namdafa National Park. One more time. Indigenous encroachments are the main driver of deforestation and poaching in the National Park. Again, guys, this is another headline that can be repeated all over the planet. This is one more chapter in the myth of the noble savage. Okay, this, the shit going on inside this national park is not land-grabbing multinational corporations. It is humans breeding inside the national park and doing what breeding humans do called feeding their families. You decide. We have thousands of species, including tigers and clouded leopards on this side, and we have humans on this side. You know my vote, and it ain't on the side of the noble savages. All right. Uh... Okay, wow, another shocking headline about climate impacts to disproportionately hurt tropical fishermen and farmers. The majority of 72 coastal communities studied in five countries in the Indo-Pacific region may face significant losses of agricultural and fisheries products two key food sources simultaneously under worst case climate change projections. Yep, yep, yep. And these potential losses will be coupled with other drivers of change, such as overfishing and soil erosion, which have already caused declining productivity. Yes. All right. Okay, here's one that's, uh, this is like uh, an all of the above, I guess. Plantations threaten Indonesia's orangutans, but they're not all oil palm plantations. Do you think so? I'm not sure are you getting hot in the sun. All right, my little dog is getting hot. And pretty soon the sun is gonna be here, so good Lord, I better hurry. Uh, a significant portion of orangutan habitat in Indonesia lies within corporate concessions, but industrial tree companies like pulp and paper do not have strong enough safeguards and commitments to protect the critically endangered apes. A new report shows, yes. According to this latest report, there are 6.2 million hectares, otherwise known as 15.3 million acres of orangutan habitat within corporate oil palm logging and industrial tree concessions. And 
of the three types of concessions, it is industrial treat companies are the key stakeholder. I love that, that word, stakeholder. Uh, all right, you will not believe this. Uh, I'm absolutely shocked. Did you, can you believe that over-exploitation threatens Amazon fisheries with collapse? Talk about a chronicle of the collapse. Here we go. Fishermen in the Amazon basin are catching smaller species of fish than before, indicating that over-exploitation of the region's aquatic biodiversity, a new study says. Yes. The study looked at fish catch data from six river ports, three from Peru and three in Brazil, to conclude that, quote, fisheries are losing their resilience and progressing towards possible collapse. Yes. Uh, anyway, do you think so? Uh, more hopium and the sun is starting to hit. All right, another shocking headline that I never would have figured out on my own Small mammals stranded by hydropower dams die out surprisingly fast. Hmm, forest fragmentation has long been known to impact species survival. Small, isolated populations with access to limited resources are at greater risk of extinction. Hmm. In 1987, for instance, the Chu Lam Reservoir was formed in southern Thailand as part of a hydropower scheme, creating more than 100 forested islands inhabited by the newly stranded animals. A new study documents the alarmingly quick collapse of the reservoirs archipelago's main small mammal communities, resulting in the loss of nearly every species. Tropical biologists warn the study reflects the global trend of fragmentation in tropical forests, which is ravaging both species diversity and ecosystem resilience. This is one more literal chronicle of the collapse of these little islands being formed by the, all of these big hydropower schemes and is just one more piece of the why there will be no more tropical ecosystems surviving on planet Earth within the next few decades. Uh, so, uh, oh well, we got time for one more. Why am I not surprised? This is a frying pan versus the fire. Asking the question, is invasive species management doing more harm than good? And my guess to that question is probably as many times as it's helping it, 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 it's probably 50-50. Half the time it's helping, and other times humans are going in there trying to fix a problem they caused, making the problem even worse, where they, they try to do something and it ends up being worse than when they started. Conservationists may be thwarting their own efforts as well as causing harm to wildlife in their battle 
against invasive species, a new op-ed argues, in numerous cases, non-native species have been shown to benefit wildlife while their management from toxic chemicals to culling may be causing more harm than good. This article is a commentary. The views expressed are those of the author Jani Malpas and not necessarily of Manga Bay. And anyway, guys, so much for my shady little respite in the back of the tiny house. I gotta wrap this up and get ready to go to a uh, the Grassroots Music Festival. Meet my friends. We're gonna go listen to some music with our friends while we still can, and I highly suggest you get out there and listen to some music with your friends while you still can. Bye guys. You need to go get that chip or what? That chip you like that.